Hello everybody, I'm so sorry about the technical difficulties we had there. Um, I'm really sorry I'm a little late to this. Um, so I live in the middle of nowhere and my connection is absolutely awful. I think that was one of the few problems going on. But um, anyway, we're here now, we can talk about Wales um, as much as we want. I'm really sorry about that. So um, just a little intro, my name is Ruby um, and I am a marine conservationist, a wildlife presenter, wildlife guide. And um, yeah, so I'm just, I've, a really big fascination of mine is um, marine mammals and more specifically whales. So um, I have a really deep interest in whales uh, because they are such emotionally intelligent and beautiful animals, but also because they are very important animals, um, you know, to so many ecosystems and also for the problems our world are, are facing right now. So um, obviously you guys are tuning in because, you know, I'll be talking a little bit about how whales can really impact and um, can really drive change in, you know, how we go about getting climate change sorted um, so yeah, I I was just reading a few of your questions. Sorry, I really appreciate. Uh, thank you. I'm really sorry again about the delayed connection. But yeah, I'm really glad you guys have all waited for me. So uh, yeah, let's get let's get started. So today I'm going to be talking more specifically about great whales. Um, so there are several species of these. Some include sperm whale, humpback whale, blue whale. So these are the larger whales, and these are whales that have a really major impact on. The, a lot of us know whale, whales are incredibly important to the food chain, really high up in the food chain. Um, we all know that for their incredible behaviours, we know that they migrate, the way they their whale song, their, their incredible size. These are just a few of them. The first reason that whales are um, incredibly um, useful into helping us combat climate change are actually the way, the way whales absorb huge amounts of carbon in their lifetime. So they actually hoard carbon in their really um, live a very long time. So, you know, some whales have been, you know, recorded over a hundred years. Um, my little humpback whale here, these guys have reached records like that. Um, and a little graph here actually showing of some of the great whales. So some of the larger whales here at the bottom, you can see um, we've got a lot of great whales in our oceans. Now, um, these whales on a recent study have actually um, have actually shown that great whales can actually store about 33 tons of carbon um, in their bodies when they and, and it gets taken down with them when they die. Um, just to put that into perspective of sort of like how much carbon that is, um, a tree will averagely sequester around a ton of carbon in a tree's lifetime so a whale can get up to around 33 tons so yeah that is um obviously a huge difference and sort of just shows how important these guys are and um, I like to think of whales almost as swimming forests that's sort of a really good way to sort of describe them just sort of you know then that more important as trees, I think, because of how much carbon they can sequester. And um, just to explain to you guys how they actually um, absorb the carbon and how it stays within their bodies. So when a whale dies, um, like I said, their carcass actually descends down to the bottom of the sea. Um, and that, that carbon in their bodies is taken out of the atmospheric cycle um, for hundreds, if not thousands of years. So um, yeah, the whale, the world does need more whales indeed. Now, um, a study has actually published um, in 2010 that um, there's an estimated eight different types of baleen whales. So baleen whales are, that there's two different types of whales. So baleen whales are whales that have baleen tusks. They feed a little differently. So what these whales will do a lot of the time is they will gulp feed filter feed a little bit like if you've heard of how a basking shark feeds that sort of way so they will gulp a lot of water into the, their grooves in their, in their sort of mouths and they will filter out lots of tiny little krill or plankton from this water and they will remove the rest of the water from the gulp the way they feed mainly 
and um, yeah, pretty insane. So toothed whales, they feed on, well, a really good example of a toothed whale is a sperm whale, like I mentioned earlier, and they will dive down to depths of up to, up to 3,000 metres and they will eat prey like the giant squid. So um, the sort of size of their food varies. But anyway, um, baleen whales, um, great whales that we get that sequester all of this carbon. So we do get the toothed whale, like the sperm whale that does that does do this too, but it's mainly baleen whales. Now, um, like I was saying, um, if you know whales can sequester so much carbon in their bodies in their lifetime, um, but you know their populations aren't doing amazingly. The humpback is actually one of the populations that is recovering quite well. But if all baleen whales were to actually recover back to their pre-existing numbers, which is around four to five million, then um, the carbon sink they would create would actually return to about 160,000 tonnes a year that they take with them down to the sea floor. Um, which is just, just, remember, just go back to remembering how much a tree can take up out of the atmosphere and then, and then listen to that stat. So whale every all the whales at the moment the average carbon um sequestration that they take down with them is about thirty thousand, which is still incredible um but yeah mills um help fight climate change is actually their poo um who'd have thought it is actually in their poo so um another word for poo, a whale poo is actually whale pump um so just p-u-m-p and um, so while whales are alive, they actually might even do, do even more to help the climate than the, uh, with, with carbon than the carbon they take with them when they die. So um, like I was saying, great whales feed on tiny marine organisms, a bit like zooplankton or krill. Um, and they do a lot of this feeding um, deep under in the excrete. So they will come up to the surface to who um, quite a lot. So um, in the science world, people actually call these punami. Water just turns a completely different colour. It is just um, yeah. When they when whales come up to poo, they they mean business. Anyway, um, so when they do into the ocean, they stimulate the growth of phytoplankton, um, which is actually a marine algae. You you might guys might have heard of that before and um this marine algae actually pulls carbon out of the atmosphere via um, photosynthesis so this is another way that whales really help us combat um, climate change so all their poo really helps all the phytoplankton at the um, surface of the water because all their nutrient-rich poo really helps the growth which um yeah so who would have thought an animal's poo would have actually helped climate change so much? Um, <clears throat> just one more study that I just find incredible. I was reading a little bit more about 12,000 and they, um, they drew over 200 tonnes of carbon out of the atmosphere each year by stimulating phytoplankton growth. And this is because sperm whales have really iron rich poo, um, which, which I just think is really cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, how, how big is the poo, some of you are asking. I don't have an exact size on how big their poo is, but um, if you just think about sort of the whale size, so some whales, you know, blue whale almost measuring 30 meters, I can imagine that some whales poo is pretty big. <laughs> um, so just to put that one into perspective, there are about 1.3 million whales um, in Earth's oceans today. And if we could restore them to their pre-commercial whaling numbers with the previous um, amazing way they help the climate with their with storing carbon and taking them, um, if we could restore them to their pre-commercial whaling numbers, which is again about four to five million, um, calculations show that great whales could actually capture about 1.7 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide each year. Um, and to put that into perspective, that's about um, the annual carbon emissions of Brazil every single year. So yeah, 1.7 billion tonnes. 
which I just find mind blowing. So Wales, you know, swimming forest impactful for helping us combat climate change is actually how um, a group of economists in the past few years have actually tried to measure how and how, what they're worth to humans, humanity, ecosystems, literally in money. So um, by sequestering carbon in the ocean, obviously whales help humanity combat climate change. Um, they are called an ecosystem service um, and economists estimate that whales are worth millions. Obviously, they are really important to the ecosystems, but they're worth millions to humanity because without the without whales, without there would be no ecosystem. With no ecosystem, there wouldn't be humanity. So using the current market price of carbon dioxide, economists have actually work, worked out the total uh, monetary value of um, these marine mammals. And they've added it to the great economic benefits that whales provide um, through things like ecotourism as well. So um, economists have estimated that each, each of these gentle giants is worth about 2 million over its lifetime. So that means that the entire global population of great whales um, a few years ago was actually estimated a $1 trillion asset to humanity. So this sort of got me thinking, you know, obviously as, as a conservationist, the reason I want to help conserve these animals is because obviously I, I just think, you know, humans are worth as much as animals. You know, well, why is this whale um, seen as any less important than me? Or why is a bug seen as less important as, as I am? Um, and I, this article got me thinking, you know, maybe the, the one way humans will really sort of eventually end up taking whale animals like whales seriously is actually through how much they are financially worth. Which, um, which is quite sad, but it's also important, you know, if it gets people away to, to try and take whales seriously. Um, because, you know, great whales, they benefit every single system, the economy, the climate, and oceans ecosystem. So um, yeah, if, if a way to take, you know, the corporate world, then I guess that's a good thing. But Hopefully everyone can love them because of how amazing they are anyway. So yeah, um, amazing floating forests and uh, how how can we actually help them? So obviously we can't all directly be out there measuring how much nutrients is in their poo, but we can, we can do other things. So what can we do in our everyday lives to help great whales? So a few things, eat less fish, um, or no fish, or look into more sustainable, um, you know, fish. Um, fish is um, obviously in in the UK. I know that there is an MSE logo, so you that you can look out for. Um, I'm not too sure about in other another no matter where you're getting it from. You are lessening your demand for that product, um, and a few people are writing go vegan. I am vegan myself, and obviously. Um, that's a whole other topic but yes um, being vegan does help the um, the environment and also the oceans as well um, a few more ways obviously buy less plastic this this can help our whales you know um, really really thrive because a lot of people think that recycling is you know the way forward but you know we need to just stop that plastic getting into the system in the first place so stop buying it um, beach cleans, obviously, um, that there is, you know, tons of whales, unfortunately, washing up along where I live um, the past year. It's actually been a record breaking year for whale strandings here in the UK. And a lot of them were because of things like fishing gear, um, plastic pollution. And um, yeah, it's obviously a really easy swap, a really easy change. And um uh, another thing that I think is really important, which a lot of people forget about, is actually supporting charities that support the cause. So support charities that support whales. That is really important. Um, do you know what? I'm actually going to list um, over on my Instagram some amazing charities that you can start supporting. So some charities like Sea Shepherd, who you know actually stop the um, hunting 
um, and to fight against the hunting of these animals. That's just one of the charities. And I've sort of mentioned that because that's actually linked to what I'm really talking about today. Um, so, yeah, um, obviously um, amazing charities that stop the hunting of whales um, that help you know, the entanglements of whales. There's so many different amazing marine conservation charities that really help say to you guys is also, um, you can you can do all the things I've said above, but you can also just spread awareness for these animals, you know, um, use these statistics I've shown you today and tell people, you know, these guys aren't just beautiful, intelligent creatures, important whales are to the, to the world and, yeah, the, the whale population, we really need to get it back to its pre-existing numbers, which are like, like I said earlier, is around four to five million. So yeah, let's, let's try and eat less fish, let's buy less plastic, do our own little beach clean. Obviously at the moment it's pretty hard. So food on a daily run, or if you do live near the beach, even better. Support charities that support whales, spread awareness about the issues I've mentioned today. And if you guys are doing that, then you can feel good and you can know that you are supporting these beautiful animals. So um, I will, I'm just gonna sort of um, free F-R-E-E -E underscore. So um, I, thank you so much again for joining me today, guys. I'm really sorry about the connection problems at the beginning. I guess that is what you get for living in the middle of nowhere um but yeah thank you so much for joining me i really hope you learned a little bit um and are even more passionate about these gentle giants as i am so yeah have a great day stay safe and uh, lots of love bye